We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Yankton, South Dakota, as we visit with John Micheletti, who is in his fourth season or heading for the fourth season as the head coach of the Lancers, the Mount Marty Lancers, fourth year of the program too as well. Coach, I want to talk about that in just a moment, but let's look back on 23 really quickly. Three and eight record. Uh, really maybe could have been four and seven, but a missed extra point, uh, really close on that sense. Tell us a little bit about last year to bring us to where we are now. Yeah. With going into our uh, third year, uh, you know, and start to build this program up and what we believe to be the right way. Uh, you know, there was a lot of positive, uh, reinforcement that we saw throughout the year, obviously continuously, uh, with our wins outside of our conference, uh, you know, winning against Cooper Stockton right away, it was a tough game. Uh, end up pulling it out late in the late in the fourth quarter, um, and then going in and, and beating Briar Cliff. So starting off the season two and zero uh, was huge, you know. And with Briar Cliff, they're pretty close to us, uh, you know. Looking on on the map, and obviously being the only other Catholic school in the conference, it's a nice uh, little starting to be a little rivalry there as well. So, uh, but then going in, the, and we had the the three uh, monsters, as you call it, you know, the Dort, Morningside, and uh, Northwestern all in a row, and um, you know, we definitely. Had some uh, losses with our, uh, obviously on the scoreboard, but also, you know, having a few of those injuries kind of hurt us that year or, or last year and being able to um, get our guys to get back and having confidence in what they do, you know, is what we reflected on what we could have kind of done better last year. Um, and, and obviously it was a tough task, you know, three of the tougher teams, not only in our conference, but in the whole nation uh, right in a row. So um, it was awesome to start the season two and zero, but then, you know, having three straight losses in a row and then being able to play our, another rival in Dakota Westland in a double overtime game, uh, that didn't turn out our way. Um, and that was a tough one, uh, tough pill to swallow there. But like I said, a lot of that stuff is part of the growing pains of going through this. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, um, very close calls, you know, if one play would have gone this way versus the other way, you know, uh, like you said, our record might've been. Uh, you know, an extra win or a few extra wins instead of, uh, of losses. So very optimistic moving into year 2024. And um, it's a lot of uh, key pieces returning. So very excited about that. I appreciate that, Coach. And I appreciate the perspective, too, because I don't care who you are in the country. You're going to play Morningside, Northwestern, Dort, back to back to back like that. that that's going to be a challenge uh, no matter what, no matter what conference. Uh, year four, that's what you're headed for right now. You came in and you've been with the program pretty much since the beginning, although you assumed the mantle of the head coaching position just a couple months before the first season really got underway, kicking off there to, to get things started in year one. The the record year one, it, it is it was what year one records, you know, often are, but three and eight in the two years to follow. And I look at the roster now and see you know, grad students and seniors, there are at least 33 grad students and seniors on that list. Maybe not all of them have been there since year one, but I'd, l I'd love to hear about the buy-in because it, it looks like that uh, the players have come and they've come to play and come to stay. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit of a luck, obviously, you know, with being where we are at. And uh, I'm very loyal to the area. Um, and obviously it goes in the school as well. You know, you got to uh, have good academics, have good things going on at the school to be able to keep those kids coming back. And hopefully, um, you know, most coaches kind of think that way they're developing a man, right. And, and it's more than just a football player. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're, um, you know, putting those resources into those guys or, or kids to become men, you know, by the time they are done here. So our guys have done a great job of, um, buying into that culture, um, you know, and then doing a great, I always say our kids are our best recruiters, you know, so when they go back to their schools or the kids come on campus and they're eating with them and mingling with them, those are guys are going to tell exactly how it is. It's, it's easy for the coaches to talk all about the good stuff, but the players are the ones living it and uh, can really be the most honest about the whole situation. So uh, unbelievable guys, uh, you know, I, I really hope that uh, it pays off for them this year. Uh, I think a lot of the work has is starting to trend in that direction, but Big believer, and you win with winners, and you lose with losers. And our, our type of guys are, are really showing that they are winners. So, uh, and then obviously the community that we live in. You know, they really invested into Mount Marty and and Lancer football. Uh, you know, being number one our first year in attendance, and obviously a little bit that is expected with being a brand new football program uh, in a football rich area. You know, the second year we were number two, and then last year we were number one again. So it's showing it's sticking around and having that community support and. Uh, like I said, it's, it, there's a lot of excitement around here, that's for sure. Let's look ahead then to 24, looking at the offense. Ken Gay had a great season last season. He's moved on, so there's going to be a, a new person 
as quarterback, but among other things, y'all was talking about seniors. He'll have at least three senior receiving receivers in, in Rex Riken, Trey Hanson, Trevor Fitzgerald, among others that he'll be getting to, to throw the ball to. Tell us a little bit about your offense. Yeah, uh, a lot of, you know, the same names are returning. Uh, three that you mentioned there, uh, Rex Riken being an All-American returner, uh, a Yankton native in himself, uh, along with Trevor Fitzgerald. Actually, he's also, uh, you know, been – been here before I've been here, you know, so he, he played at Yankton High School and then uh, uh, Trey Hansen from Gilbert, Iowa, you know, both all those guys have started here as freshmen and being able to compete and and help build this program up from scratch. We are excited to see how the uh, quarterback battle uh, turns out here, especially throughout fall camp. Um, one of them is uh, the Riken's brother in rugby, Riken, who also plays basketball for us too, so you can see he's quite the athlete. And then uh, Clayton Byers, a guy that uh, has filled in here and there when uh, Ken Gay the last couple of years may have had an injury or something like that. So people have been able to see him a little bit as well. Uh, up front, though, we've got a lot of guys that uh, have been here for a while, too. You know, our, our big left tackle and Patrick Perkins, uh, everybody calls him Big P. He's, you know, returning back for his fourth year. And uh, his roommate, Jonas Kelp, is the other tackle. And he's coming back again for his, his last year. Uh, Anil Pastrana, guard. Uh, and Xavier Gable, you know, like all those guys have have had a lot of starts underneath their belt and have really bought into like what we talked about earlier is the culture of uh, uh, within this program. So we're excited. Um, definitely high expectations for our offense with how much is coming back. And a lot of those uh, returning pieces should kind of help with that quarterback being a new guy back there in the signal caller. We're visiting now John Micheletti from Mount Marty, who's heading into his fourth year as the head coach there for the Lancers. And coach, you know, it's it's not uncommon, by the way, to look at your roster and see hometown Yankton. So you've been able to recruit well within your local area, and, and props to you for that. On defense, Joshua Pickthorn, Pickthorn, David Wilson, both seniors, both coming back as linebackers, two of the top three on your team last year in tackles and in tackles for loss. Talk about the defense a little bit. Yeah, um, defense is kind of uh, my baby. That's where I kind of grew up on that side and got into the whole head coaching uh, realm was calling the defense and all that. So come with the defensive background. I do actually call the defense as well. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Pickthorn and uh, David Wilson returning as our outside linebackers. Uh, Jacob Lambeth, who filled in throughout halfway during the year at our Mike Backer, he is back uh, and is a senior leader. Uh, Gabe Baptista on the back end, unbelievable safety. He's the leader. He's the guy that's get all the checks right and getting everybody in the right position. Um, and, you know, and then we got, uh, you know, a few guys returning at a, a corner that we've been seeing, uh, you know, throughout spring ball and things like that, but they don't have as much reps throughout the conference play. And uh, uh, sorry, excuse me, Asmaran Muhammad and Amir Conley at our corners. Uh, one of those is a U Mary transfer, originally from Sioux Falls, Roosevelt, so not too far away. Uh, and then Amir Conley actually played with Gabe in junior college. So excited to have those guys all kind of mesh together. And our D-line, you know, there's a lot of common names that are coming back. Cameron Middleton at our stand-up rush. Uh, Dalen Norman's been an all-conference guy for us in the past. Uh, Jonathan Carlstead is an ex-Marine and a uh, one of our leaders on the team that uh, is one of the older guys uh, for sure, but one of the guys that definitely holds everybody else accountable. So excited about our defense. The guys have been able to run the same scheme now for a few years, so they're very comfortable with it. Uh, and along with some key pieces that we're able to bring in uh, to complement the guys around it. So we're, we're definitely excited. Coach, I don't know if you can go wrong having an ex-Marine on your defensive line. That's, that's a pretty good place to start. For sure. Um, I'm all, yeah, anybody that's got a – it seems I always have a team with, uh, you know, an ex-Marine or ex-military of some sort. And obviously there's a lot of commonalities between football and, uh, you know, talking about the military and all those things. But uh, – Usually I'm looking at when recruiting guys that have wrestling backgrounds, but military is also <laughs> right there as well. I agree that I, I, you, again, you just almost can't go wrong there. New names in the special teams facet of the game though. Tell us a little bit about that area. Yep. A uh, couple guys that you've seen a little bit last year would have been Jack finder. He uh, complimented uh, Maxwell Welch when either they had a lot of kicks or he got his leg got a little bit sore. He did a little bit of both of punting and kicking uh, and then uh, Juan Arroyo is a, a transfer uh, kicker that's got quite a leg on him, and we're excited to see him and see what kind of range that we can test him with. So um, very excited about those guys. I, I'm uh, a very aggressive guy on special teams, but definitely want to make sure that you have those guys to, in those situations to do what they do best. Well, it really is. It's 
at least on paper from this perspective, not necessarily an easy start to the season. You get to take on Mount Marty again. That's your season opener out of conference there, and you're going to be on the road in Canton for that game. And then the next two games are also on the road from Saturday, August 31st with the season opener. Then September 7th, you get Dakota Wesleyan on the road. Uh, I know that's a that's a that's an interesting rivalry-type game there. Northwestern on the road at Orange City on the 14th. Finally back at home on Saturday, September 21st, and you welcome in the new member of the conference in Waldorf, and you finally get a home game. Tell us a little bit about the opening of your season. Yeah, we uh, obviously want to keep the streak going of uh, out-of-conference play and defending uh, all that, and I I'm good friends with Coach Sally down at Culver, so a little bit of bragging rights down there too. Uh, but then, yeah, getting to a rivalry game at Dakota Westland and uh, starting a traveling trophy actually this year. We're calling it the Dakota uh Railroad rivalry and being able to get a uh, yeah a trophy after the game and all that stuff and their new head coach and I go way back we uh, actually GA together at St Ambrose University he was the offensive GA and I was the uh, defensive GA and this is the kind of the stuff that we were talking about back in those days and now it's come to <laughs> come true so now we actually live out our dreams being able to coach against each other and all that um, and then Northwestern going into into Northwestern obviously uh, a game that easily can get up for our guys are ready to play against some of the best of the best there. And, um, you know, they obviously have some new faces and some new positions as well that we're excited to see how they're going to be. And I know coach McCarty does a great job of, uh, getting those guys ready for the season. And then, like you said, Waldorf at home, you know, it, it uh, we play, we don't get to really, uh, pick our schedule, but whatever comes out, we're ready to go with it. And being able to open up, you know, at home against a new opponent and also have that be our home coming game, uh, should make it a great atmosphere. Coach, I, I I meant to mention that that railway rivalry there too. I remember talking kind of about a tongue twister team. there, ain't it? <laughs> it, is, it is, but I like it. And, I, and we talked about it when we were previewing Dakota Wesley, and and I, I there's so much marketing that you can do with that, and I think it's cool. So I want to do my part to help promote, and I may have to say it two or three times fast off right. the air before we get on the air and say it next time. But anyway, uh, we're going to follow the Lancers this season, Coach John McAletta. Thank McAletta, thank you for. Saying this, I'm going to have to to get this one to an end. I'm I'm tongue tied all the way through the end of it here. Thank you, sir, for taking time with us today. We're going to follow the Lancers this season and success to you all in in year four of your tenure and to the program as well. And again, we just appreciate you previewing Mount Marty here today on Midwest Sportsnet. Yeah, I appreciate it, and uh, thank you for all you do for NAI football. <laughs>